If there's one comment I see more frequently than any other in the comments for my films, it's this. What about Ivan Mectin? Well, what about it? Hang around and I'm going to dive into the evidence and find out if there's anything to it. First of all, what is ivermectin? It was originally an anti-parasitic drug that's been around quite a long time. It was discovered in 1975 and came into medical use in 1981. It's on the WHO's list of essential medicines, and it's generally very well tolerated and considered a safe drug. It came into focus during the pandemic as it also possesses potent antiviral characteristics, previous studies having reported positive effects against other RNA viruses like Zika, Dengue, Yellow Fever and others. And there have been dozens of studies done in the last six months directly trialling ivermectin against acute COVID-19. Notably, these studies have been done in countries which already frequently used ivermectin, such as Egypt, India and Bangladesh. And there's been a degree of sniffiness around these trials so far by Western medical journals. Take this recently published study in The Lancet, which states that there is currently limited evidence to support ivermectin's clinical use in COVID-19. The trial itself used a single dose, found no improvement in proportion of PCR positives, but did find a lower viral load and improved symptoms, warranting assessment in larger trials. Thing is, there have been large trials out there already. I'm not going to do a full literature review as other channels have already done that well. Dr Mike Hansen does a good job in describing the results of those trials and some of the flaws in this film. And Dr Andrew Hill from Liverpool University does a nice breakdown of the studies to date in this film. I recommend watching both of them. But TLDR, the results for acute COVID do look pretty promising, and improved outcomes are positively correlated with the amount and frequency of ivermectin taken. However, all of these studies have been looking at the presentation or mortality of acute COVID, not long COVID. And the two are most definitely separate conditions with different pathologies. I'm not ill now the same way I was back in March. Is there any evidence out there for the efficacy of ivermectin with long haulers? Well, yes there is. Just one study by Gustavo Aguirre Chang, Eduardo Saavedra and Manuel Yui. Let's take a look. So it's worth pointing out that this is a preprint and not exactly a lengthy paper. I'm not sure where it's been submitted to or where it might ultimately get published. But what does it say? Chang et al. took 33 patients who were between one and three months into their long COVID experience. First observation, this group no longer represents the majority of long haulers who are infected in wave one and are now 10 months in or more. Treatment was two days of ivermectin at 0.2 mg per kilo for those with mild symptoms and 0.4 mg per kilo for those with moderate symptoms. If after two days the patient still had symptoms, two more days worth were administered. If they still had symptoms after that, then dosing continued until improvement was observed or the patient stopped improving. And the results? Apparently sparkling. In 94% of the 33 patients, clinical improvement to some degree, partial or total, was observed after two doses of ivermectin. Total improvement without any symptoms was observed in 87.9% of the patients after the two daily doses of ivermectin. In 12.1% of patients whose symptoms had not completely resolved after the first two doses, additional doses of ivermectin treatment were administered according to the protocol and total clinical resolution of symptoms was observed in 94% of cases. So that all sounds pretty good, doesn't it? But there is a rather large elephant in the room. And that's that there's absolutely no follow-up or longitudinal analysis. Did the patient stay better? Were they cured? Or were they a few days later back to where they were before? The paper doesn't have any answers on any of that. And as far as I can tell, in the six months since, uh, Chang et al have not published anything else uh, or followed up in any way. So what are we to make of all this? So, in the name of science, I actually got hold of some ivermectin myself a little while ago. It wasn't that easy, it involved some international sourcing online, uh, payments in crypto and so on. But what turned up did seem legit, and I think it came from India. 
I took 15 megs daily for three days. And you know what? By days two, three, and four, I actually felt quite a lot better. I would say days three and four felt almost normal again. But two weeks later, uh, where I am now, I feel like I'm pretty much back to where I was before I took the ivermectin. So what's going on here? Well, ivermectin is a pretty effective anti-inflammatory, and that positive response I felt, and Chang's patients felt, was most likely due to that particular function of the drug. Ultimately, the efficacy of ivermectin with long COVID is all going to depend on the answer to the ongoing question of viral persistence. And to some of you watching, you'll know what I'm talking about when I say to that particular question, watch this space. Um, if we do find viral persistence, as we have seen in the small sample of biopsies uh, from the small intestine in this study, then ivermectin will probably be one of the first ports of call to try and deal with it. But if we can't find evidence of viral persistence, then ivermectin may only offer temporary relief for long COVID symptoms and not offer the prophylactic or viral inhibition benefits that it does with acute COVID. In any case, it's not licensed for use against COVID-19 in the US or the UK. So there's still a long way to go before your GP will give you any. And obviously I can't recommend doing what I did and sourcing yourself some outside of official channels. So to answer the question in the title, is ivermectin the wonder drug for long COVID? Um, the answer is probably not, not for the moment anyway. Till next time.